this right here is the cat that resides at my house. Her name is Chloe. She doesn't really belong to me. She really belongs to my wife. But she used to be a huge 49er fan just because she tried to get me to like her. But it's not working. And this right here is a Patrick Willis game-worn jersey. Now, you may remember Saturday night, the 49ers got absolutely thrashed by the Texans 30-7. to I'm going to see what happens, see if Chloe is still a 49ers fan after the throttling that the Texans gave her. I'm going to see if she'll put on this Patrick Willis game-worn jersey. Put it on. Put it on. Put it on. Put it on. Come on. It's your team. Put it on. No, come on. Put it on. Come on. Okay. She's wearing it. Oh. You want no part of it? No? Apparently, after that beatdown by the Texans last night, only I will be wearing this 49ers jersey going forward. As for the game, I mean, it is what it is. Texans won 30-7. to My own Manchester United soccer team scored more goals than the 49ers scored points by a score of 8-7 to this weekend. Texans had one bad play the entire game. Matt Schaub threw a pick six. Uh, to Ahmad Brooks on the very first play of the game, so the Texans got behind him, but that was basically it. The Niners are a train wreck. The Niners are literally trying to suck for luck. So all the positives that you take out of the Texans game from a defensive standpoint, you have to temper them by knowing that, number one, the Niners are not a good football team when their starters are playing. Number two, the Niners were putting a lot of their second-string guys in there at times, especially at wide receiver. You didn't have Braylon Edwards and Michael Crabtree getting a lot of plays out there, not a lot for Vernon Davis either. But, my God, the, the Niners quarterbacks are so bad. Alex Smith, Colin Kaepernick, they were both terrible. Texans did get very good pressure on the quarterback the majority of the game. Great stuff from Connor Barwin. Great stuff from Brooks Reed. Tim Jamison, another strong game. Obviously, Troy Nolan with the uh, two interceptions, one that he returned for a touchdown. Give them a lot of credit for that. There's not a whole lot of c complaints out there. The Texans looked dominant. They looked like they were going to take advantage of a bad football team, and they did just that. Only negatives coming out of it, clearly injuries. Arian Foster uh, blowing out a hamstring again. Hopefully, we'll be ready for the Indianapolis Colt game, but maybe... This means the Texans are going to have to carry four running backs to start the season, which would uh, probably mean Derek Ward, Ben Tate, and maybe Chris Obanaya being the fourth back behind Arian Foster. But from uh, making you feel more or less excited about the Texans' season, I think a lot of the positives you have to weigh with knowing just how bad the San Francisco team is going to be this year. It's kind of like... It, it, the, the San Francisco 49ers and the, the Texans last night, it, it was just a, it was a bad match. It's like, it would be like, well, it would be like the Nintendo Wii putting Vince Young on the cover of an NFL football game. Whose idea was that? Really? Madden curse, you think? Just a little bit? I mean, I realize this is back in 2008, and maybe that was coming off one of Vince's great years, but really? How many quarterbacks turned this down so that Vince was on the cover of this game. That is bizarre. Oh, by the way, much like Vince Young, a lot of hype surrounding the game didn't quite pan out to be all that entertaining in the grand scheme of things. But maybe come 2012, when Mike Vick gets hurt and Vince guides the Eagles to the Super Bowl, he'll be back on the cover of Madden 2013. Well, maybe not. First cut's coming by tomorrow for the Texans. I don't expect you to see any big names out there with maybe the lone exception of Steve Slayton, if they decide there's just not a trade market for him and they don't intend to keep him, maybe they try to give him a chance to catch on with someone else. But uh, for all in all, it was a good, dominant effort by the Texans, but you do have to realize they were playing probably one of the three worst teams in the National Football League. We'll continue to monitor the Texans' practi practice and progress. Hope you'll tune into the big show on Sports Talk 790 every morning beginning at 6 a.m. And we want to see you back here as well at Sports790.com.